Hi guys, Dr. Greg Hickman here again from the Andrews Institute. Uh, we're going to do an interscaling catheter today. I want to talk a little bit about why we actually do the posterior approach. Uh, we've done this for, for quite a while. We think there's several advantages, maybe even safer. Uh, certainly some advantages we feel over the anterior approach today. We're going to bring in our probe. One thing we do, we keep the probe on the non-sterile side. I'm back here. I can reach through and grab the drape as I need to. Um, and to uh, to proceed, the door we need to hook up here too. So we're going to hook up our stimulator. I still use a stimulator most of the time for these. And we're going to flush our needle out, make sure there's no air in our needle and our syringe and tubing. Okay, you can see now we've got. Um, We've got um, our, our probe on, on the underside. I can reach through and grab it like this. Now, one of the keys is holding the probe at the base. That way you can maneuver it, you can hold steady that way. And we're gonna look at our ultrasound image now. As you can see here, um, not a, not, you don't always get a great stoplight sign. This one's okay. You can see here, we've got a, a nice, sort of round anterior scalene muscle in front of the plexus right there. Um, you see the plexus in between. Then you've got the it's very kind of a small triangular uh, middle scalene muscle posterior to the plexus right in, right in there. And then we got our little stoplight sign. It's, um, it's a little bit of curvy. It's not straight up and down. But that's, uh, that's our approach we want to do. Uh, we can see we're actually a little bit low to get a good stoplight sign because we still see the artery. Uh, sometimes you, you are a little bit low. Normally you go higher and let the artery, uh, the subclavian artery get out of your view. But here if we go higher then you see C5 separating way off from uh, C6. So we want to stay down here where they're, they're pretty much together. They're going to come up, see them separating again, C5 coming off which is a common area for some people. You want to do the block right there, but it's just too high. We want to keep them together, like about right in here at this level, so you can see all, all three together like that. So we can look at our depth on, on the side of the screen. The, the, the complete depth of this image is 2.7 centimeters, so we're only about one centimeter deep to the plexus. So I'm going to come back here posteriorly and try to go about a centimeter below the probe, maybe a centimeter and a half, and start our, our local in injection right here. Big stinks are one, two, three. I'm going to come in. Big stink, Sorry. Big stink. There you go. Try not to tense up. There you go. We're going to come right through the middle scalene muscle. Now we're going to come in with our posterior approach. Mm -hmm. Get it just in line here. Sorry. Okay, a couple of things coming in posteriorly. One is if you're coming in with an, an anterior approach and you go deep past the plexus there, the vertebral artery is sitting just deep to the plexus. So if you're coming anteriorly, your vertebral artery will be down in this area and there's a risk of, of, of getting absorption uh, or actually injecting in the vertebral artery if you come in from an anterior approach from the top of the screen and go past the plexus uh, for some reason. Coming in posteriorly, we come in, we've kind of got to look out for the dorsal scapular nerve. Sometimes you see it well in the middle scaling muscle, sometimes you don't. I'm stimulating here, I'm trying to see if this is it right here. We're not getting any stimulation, so I don't think that is it. Sometimes it's kind of hyperechoic there and we're not we're not getting any stim there's there's a little twitch there we're not through the muscle though okay now we're getting up close to the plexus what we want to do is just penetrate the fascia of the middle scalene muscle but not the the sheath of the of the plexus so i'm going to come in here there i think we popped through because our our twitch has gotten pretty significant on the in the uh in the deltoid and triceps so we're going to inject just a little bit of local here. Okay, Dora, inject five cc's of local. A lot of pressure here. Oh, wow. Okay, 
Okay. Pressure. Okay. Five more right here. Pressure. We'll do another five cc's. We're trying to open up this space between the sheath and the fascia of the middle scalene muscle. As you can see, it's really easy to move your, your needle around in this, in, this, uh, in this plane and open that area up because we want to make room to put our catheter in here. Again, we want to stay outside. I, I prefer to stay outside the sheath of the plexus. Um, that way we, we decrease our risk of getting a subarachnoid or an epidural injection that could track back up centrally. Okay, now let's go with five more cc's, Dora. Let's see if we can open up our space here. Okay, now I'm gonna lay my needle right over, that's 15 cc's total, that's all we need to get our initial block. I'm gonna lay my needle right up over C5 there. I'm gonna let our nurse hold the probe while I grab the catheter and start threading our catheter here. So we're going to try to do the, the flip or the full gainer here, laying the catheter right up over C5 or the tip of the needle over C5 and then we should see the tip of the catheter come out right there. As the catheter comes out, I'm going to push the needle down as I thread. And hopefully we're going to see the flip just like that. So we've got our flip. We'll come back up in our space and go back up top. I may just go for another, may go for a double gainer here. I've got about two or three cc's. I like to get about four or five in here. Two or three is plenty for, for a, lot of, a lot of people. That's, that's enough. But I just don't like for these catheters to come out. Looks like I'm having trouble getting any more though. Okay. Maybe I'll pull back too far. Still trying to thread, but I'm not having much luck here. There we go. A little bit more going in now. There we go. Got another flip. And I can thread the catheter a little bit as I come back up with the needle to get some extra, extra catheter in our space between the plexus and, uh, and the middle scaling muscle. So I've got about uh, four cc's, or four, uh, centimeters there. I'm just going to leave that, pull our needle back, leaving our catheter hopefully in that space we created between the middle scalene and the sheath of the plexus. And that way we're keeping the tip, since we flipped our tip of our catheter over, hopefully it's down there around the C6 nerve roots and not up over C5 where local could get up to the phrenic nerve on the anterior scalene muscle. So we're going to check our catheter, check our spread of our local, make sure it's going to be in the appropriate space, again, posterior to the plexus. Okay, just a couple cc's of local here. So there's our plexus. You can see our plexus right there. The injectate should be just to the right of that. I'm hoping that's the tip of the catheter, that big hyperechoic spot right to the right of C6 there. So on three, we're going to inject some local. One, two, three. So there we go. Nice spread. Uh, a little bit more on the C6, C6 uh, roots, but uh, I think there's still enough getting up to C5. At least we're staying to the, uh, to the right or posterior to the sheath and between the middle scaling muscle. That looks, that's a great view right there. You can see the plexus well now. See the middle scaling muscle plexus there. See a little better after the local surrounding it. Looks great. We'll, uh, we'll actually freeze that image. Save that for our chart. Uh, look at that high, bright hyperechoic uh, dot right there. It's probably the tip of our catheter. Unusual, you don't see that very often. Um, it's kind of cool. 
but uh, that's that's got to be what that is, and that's a perfect location for our catheter. Uh, again, keeping our local all posterior, not in the sheath, posterior to the sheath, and we usually run these at four cc's an hour. Our patients can up the rate to six or eight if they need to, but four cc's usually manages them. Okay, so as we're finished up here, you can see with the posterior approach, you can see this is the back back of the neck here. Here's his ear up here. There you go. And we, with the posterior approach, we come in here and I actually tunnel a couple centimeters even more medial to the midline and uh, I put a little mastosol on here. So I got a little loop, a couple loops here of catheter and then covered with two tegaderms, a small tegaderm and then a larger tegaderm on top of that. Um, this is, it secures it. It gives us some more slack by the little curls and loops and uh, that way if they drop their ball and it pulls the, the catheter out a little bit, we got a little slack to work with. The other thing is, you can zoom out just a little bit. The other thing is by coming in posteriorly like this and tunneling back to the midline, we're way back here in the back of the neck with our catheter. Coming back. So that we're way out of our surgical field up here with our, sh with our shoulder. With our shoulder surgery, we can put the drapes on here and not have our catheter be in the way or risk of being ripped off uh, with, uh, with the drapes as when they finish their procedure. So here we are concluding our posterior approach to the interscaling block and interscaling catheter placement. As I said earlier, as we did the procedure, we're coming in posteriorly in plane through the middle scaling muscle. Uh, one thing to look for is the dorsal scapular nerve. Uh, we've uh, now shown that it's, it, it is in, in or around the middle scaling muscle. Also, the long thoracic nerve is, is around the uh, middle scaling muscle, so be aware those nerves are back there. Uh, by staying superficial and in plane, we don't go too deep, decreasing our risk of getting to the vertebral artery and also to the spinal cord. Uh, we stay posterior to the sheath of the plexus, uh, decreasing our risk of subarachnoid and epidural injections, and flipping our catheter over gets uh, extra catheter in and, and decreasing our risk of uh, pulmonary complications with, with phrenic nerve involvement. And that concludes our interscaling catheter. Thank you.